<laughs> yeah, my back. Can you breathe through this? Yeah! Sandy. Yeah. Okay, well, here we go. Back in the early days of my music career, some musician friends and I decided to hit the road and play some shows. We hitched a ride with another band from Halifax to Toronto, a distance of just over a thousand miles. We had no plans for our return trip. We were so confident in our brilliance, we were sure we'd fly home first class with millions in our pockets. Well, the trip didn't go quite as planned. Some shows fell through, some shows didn't pay at all. The trip went way over budget. When it was time to go back home, we were screwed. We were broke and stranded. Each of us put our tails between our legs and called our parents to beg for mercy. One by one, each of us were told that we got ourselves into the mess, we'd have to get ourselves out. The last of us to make the call was my friend Brian. We caught a lucky break. Brian's parents told him that his grandfather was about to make a trip from nearby Hamilton to Nova Scotia and that maybe we could get a ride with him. There were four of us all together, but luckily Brian's grandfather drove a van. <coughs> it was perfect. A few more calls were made and then a plan was put into place. Now the first wrinkle in the plan was that Brian's grandfather refused to drive in the city. <laughs> so we were instructed to wait by the side of the highway and look for, a, he'd look for a group of four and we'd look for a white van. <laughs> then came the second wrinkle. Police came along before Brian's grandfather came. <laughs> the officer told us that it was illegal to stand on the shoulder of that particular stretch of the highway and that we'd have to leave. So. We hid in the bushes with our equipment and jumped out, waving our arms anytime we saw a white van. <laughs> Fifteen white vans later, Brian's grandfather arrived and pulled over to the shoulder. When Brian opened the passenger side door, we saw sitting behind the wheel a fraction of a man. Brian's grandfather was missing many parts of his original body. <laughs> legs, fingers, teeth, ears, God knows what else. The missing leg meant that he got around in a wheelchair. And the wheelchair meant that the van was customized with a hydraulic platform system that would allow him to get in and out on his own. And the equipment meant that there wasn't much room in the van for passengers, there was really only room for one. <laughs> I don't know where your efforts are going to go, he said with the most gravelly voice I've ever heard. He didn't actually use the word efforts, but I will say that he referred to us as you efforts for the rest of the trip. Now Brian sat up front with his grandfather. The rest of us twisted and contorted ourselves into the back, being careful not to touch the wheelchair, any of the equipment, or the old man's blanket as per his instructions. <laughs> it was almost impossible and extremely uncomfortable, but we were grateful for the ride. Brian's grandfather was one of the top three scariest human beings I've ever encountered. He looked scary, I suppose. His head was huge and square and purple, but it was his energy. He was like a cage of constant fury. And even though he was disabled, he radiated the impression that he could kill him with two fingers, maybe even just with a look. I dared not make a sound or make eye contact in the rearview mirror. Hey guys! Uh, so, as soon as we started driving, our friend Corey fell asleep. His body was practically tied in a knot as he rested on the steel bed of the van, but he's one of those guys who can sleep anywhere and through anything. And the ride was extra rough because Brian's grandfather kept driving off the road. He was distracted by the sight of churches he would see in the distance as we drove past small towns. He'd veer off the road, hit the gravel shoulder, and then jerk the van back onto the highway with maximum violence. 
I'd have a heart attack and Corey would remain blissfully unaware even though his head would clank against the wall of the van with terrific force. Adding to the agony of the journey, Brian's grandfather pulled into every single rest stop along the way. Usually, we'd just sit there in total silence for ten minutes and then start driving again. On our very first stop, the old man unzipped and pissed into a juice bottle without moving from the driver's seat. He moaned and grunted as he pissed. When he was done, he put the lid on the bottle and stuck it in the beverage holder. It was right in my line of vision. It was almost impossible not to look at. The piss sloshing inside as the van veered on and off the shoulder of the highway. Late that night and in the wilds of Quebec, after a good 16 hours of driving, Brian's grandfather decided that it was finally time for him to get out for some air. He lifted himself up from the driver's seat and plunked himself down in his wheelchair. Then he reached over to flick a switch that was supposed to engage the system that would lift him out of the van. But when he hit the switch, nothing happened. A new fury blazed in his eyes. He looked over the equipment and spotted the problem. In his slumber, my friend Corey who had been asleep for this full 16 hours, by the way, kicked out one of the wires that powered the system. The old man exploded. I told you rotten effers not to touch anything. Corey jolted away. What's the problem? What happened? Tell me what to do. I'll fix it. Don't touch a thing, you curly cs or I'll rip your stupid face off. <laughs> he lifted himself out of the chair and let his body crash to the floor of the van. It was very upsetting. He then crawled over us to get to the problem area. He struggled with the wires, growling like a jaguar as he worked. He was missing a thumb on one hand, so he had to use his teeth. Sparks flew out of his mouth as he cursed. Once the repair was made, he had to get himself lifted back up into his chair. We all knew better than to offer help. As he prepared to hoist himself, he clamped onto my knee with his claw-like hand, the one with the thumb. <laughs> it was incredibly powerful. He squeezed punishment into me as he lifted. The pain was blinding. I wanted to scream, but dared not. Just before he fell back into the wheelchair, he hung in the air like a gymnast, his buttocks positioned directly in front of my face. There was about six inches between my nose and his pants pockets. Yes, he did. The old man blasted a fart that he must have been saving for five years directly into my olfactory systems. The gale force of his rectal monsoon actually blew my hair back. And I could see it too. The shock wave caused a rippling effect in the air, and my vision was briefly tinted with a brown distortion. There was also a distinct taste associated with the gust. It was Brussels sprouts and tires. Oh, flavor. God! It was what I imagine a sarin gas attack to be like. I didn't stop breathing for refusal to do so. I was physically unable. A chemical reaction took place that caused a brief asphyxiation. I felt death's hand on my shoulder. Once the door of the van slid open, I tumbled out ahead of the wheelchair and barrel rolled under the vehicle. It was a survival instinct. I refused to come out. My friends had to plead and negotiate for several minutes before I agreed to emerge. I thought it preferable to risk death or desertion than to re-enter that rolling laboratory of cruelties. When we finally did recommence, the old man decided to fuel up. He maneuvered the van into the gas station's full service zone. When the attendant came to the window, he started speaking in French. What the F is wrong with this A-H? I can't understand a GD word he's saying. I don't think he had ever heard French before. I'm not even sure he understood the concept of other languages. <laughs> Luckily, Brian jumped in and knew enough French to complete the transaction. His grandfather looked at him as if he had just transformed into a werewolf. 
When it was time to pull out, the still seething old man performed a malign ceremony for the francophone heretic. He unscrewed <laughs> the lid from his piss bottle and flung oh, no. its content oh, no. on him as we drove away. Oh. It was incredibly shocking. <laughs> well, our trip home should have taken a full day. Instead, it took three. There were more scrapes with death and evil along the way. <laughs> But I'd rather forget than call them back into my memory's focus at this point. Ladies and gentlemen, horse feathers! I was not major. Behaving. <laughs> 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 <laughs>